as the Buddha says, one of the rewards of concentration is you get to understand the aggregates. What is form? What is feeling? Perception, fabrication, consciousness. You get to watch them arise. You get to watch them pass away. When you see them clearly, you can begin to see where your clinging is to them and how the clinging involves suffering. That's when you can pinpoint these things that you can begin to let go. It's like having a room full of stuff. It's only when you sort things out that you begin to see which things have to be thrown away, which things can be kept. One of the reasons why concentration allows this sorting out process is because you can see these things clearly only when the mind is really still. But the other reason is that you actually get hands-on practice in these things, in the course of getting the mind to be concentrated. And in the course of that hands-on practice, you have to start sorting them out. John Lee's images of a rock that has different minerals in it, and as you apply effort to your concentration, or in this case as you apply heat to the rock, when you hit the melting point for, say, say tin or lead or silver or gold, the metals in the rock will flow out and separate on their own. You don't have to go sorting through with a pick to say, well, this is a little bit of gold or this is a little bit of silver. They naturally separate out as you apply the effort. A better image, though, might be as you're learning a physical skill. So you have to jump as part of the skill, or you have to play a musical instrument. You're learning how to dance or learning a sport. And if you haven't been able to isolate the different muscles in your legs and the other parts of the body that are, you're going to employ, the jump is going to be clumsy. But as you get your own sense from within of which muscle is needed to make the jump graceful or make it go, make it go far or high, then you perform a lot better. And it's the same way with the meditation. We start out trying to focus on the breath, and we put a lot of pressure on it for fear that if we don't put a lot of pressure on it, the mind's going to slip away. Of course, a lot of pressure on the breath has an effect on the circulation in the body. You can create a lot of tension, a lot of tightness, a lot of discomfort doing it that way. And even with all that tension and tightness, it doesn't prevent you from slipping off, because it's more to concentration than just pressure. You've got all these other mental activities going on. And to understand the breath, you have to get a better understanding of how you're sensing the body from within. And this also makes the concentration a lot more efficient. If you can figure out, when the Buddha is talking about earth, water, wind, and fire, Exactly what is he talking about? When we breathe in, many times there's a feeling of pressure that we're spreading through the body. And especially when you say spread your awareness through the body or spread the breath through the body. Your immediate reaction is to spread pressure through the body, which is something different. You have to learn how to separate these things out. Which sensations are the breath sensations that flow through the body without disturbing anything else at all? Then awareness is not something physical. Why should your awareness create pressure in the different parts of the body? When you can start to separate these things out, it gets a lot easier to settle down and stay with the breath, realizing that the breath energy doesn't have to be penned in by anything. It doesn't have to exert pressure on anything. It can flow smoothly, lightly all through the body. 
instantaneously. You don't have to drag it through through the in-breath. Some people say, I try to breathe down through the body through the in-breath and I only get far as the neck or only far as the middle of the back before I have to start breathing out. Well, that's a misconception of the breath. You're probably even pushing some blood down there without realizing it. Because there's an aspect to the breath that as soon as you begin to breathe in, there's a breath and it's already gone throughout the whole body. When you can learn how to detect that, it gets a lot easier to follow, to stay with the breath. The same with feelings. We talk about giving rise to a feeling of pleasure with the breath, pleasure with the concentration. Where does it come from? And you can't push pleasure into the body. You have to realize that there are lots of little centers in the body, little sensation centers. And all you have to do is give them a little bit of space and a feeling of what seems like neutrality to begin with actually becomes pleasurable if you give it space, if you're not pushing and pulling around too much. And the more consistently you can maintain that sense of space, the greater the pleasure grows. It becomes a rapture even, a sense of refreshment, fullness. Sometimes it can get so intense that you feel like you're drowning. You're not. But simply the fact that you're allowing these sensations to move through the body and the movement of the breath is not disturbing them, it's giving them space. It means that sensations that you're used to associate with the in and out breath are not happening. In some place inside your mind you're setting up alarm signals. The breath is still moving, it's still coming in, going out, but your old forced ways of breathing are not happening. And when you learn that it was forced and it's not necessary, you find that you can breathe in and out with a much greater feeling of rapture and fullness and pleasure. It becomes something you can tap into at any time. And as you learn how to dissociate the breath from the pressure, dissociate your awareness from the pressure, you begin to see that what's really holding you here is the perception. There's a metal label that just says breath, and there's a picture that goes along with the label. And some pictures about the breath are more conducive than others. To ask yourself, how do you conceive this process of breathing in the body? And how does the way you conceive it force you to breathe in ways that are uncomfortable? Can you readjust your perception, readjust your label, readjust your little metal picture in there? So when John Lee talks about thinking of all the pores in your skin opening up, because when you focus really clearly and distinctly on that perception of the pores opening up, they open up. This is one of the ways that the brain has of communicating with itself, is through these images. And so bit by bit you're beginning to isolate out the perception. Then there's the fabrication. These are the questions you ask yourself about the breath. Your intention to stay here is a fabrication. Your intention to change the breath is a fabrication. The way you evaluate how things are going, that's a fabrication as well. And the more clearly you can isolate these functions, the more skillfully you can do them. And then there's consciousness, which is the awareness of all these things. And there are different types of consciousness. There's the focused consciousness. And then there's kind of a background awareness that's already there throughout the body. When we talk about spreading your awareness, it's more a question of letting yourself get in touch with the awareness that's already throughout the body. And it doesn't have to exert any pressure on anything at all either. So you learn how to separate the consciousness from 
say, the earth and the water and other things in the physical side of the body that we were confusing it with. And you find that the more clearly you can isolate these things, the easier it is to figure out exactly what's going wrong when the mind is not settling down. And you begin to see any perceptions or fabrications of feelings that might disturb your concentration. You get a better sense of how to handle those as well. That little process where there's a stirring someplace in the body, which could either be physical or mental to begin with, but then you decide it's going to be a thought. And you place the label of, this is a thought about X, and then you allow it to grow in that particular direction. When the mind is really still, you can see this happening. And you can see it more clearly because you're intent on not allowing it to take over your concentration. So it's through your mastery of these different processes that you can actually get the mind to settle down, which is why when the mind has settled down, it can see these things more clearly, because you've had direct experience and separating them out so you can get the mind to settle down to begin with. It's notable that when the Buddha was teaching the five aggregates, as he did in the sutta we were chanting just now, it's not one of the teachings that he picked up from other schools of thought that were his contemporaries. It's one of the teachings that's original with him. But it is very directly related to the mastery of concentration. And John Lee points this out. He says, when you're dealing with the breath, you're dealing with form. As the form begins to get more and more subtle, as the breath stops, the mind begins to focus on space. That's a feeling. Then it goes to consciousness. That's the consciousness. Then there's nothingness. You begin to recognize that that's a fabrication. Then there's the state of neither perception or non-perception, and you see how attenuated perception can be. These things all begin to separate out as you get into concentration deeper and deeper. That's also why when you're beginning to look at the issue of suffering, you begin to see more clearly. This is how suffering comes about. You're clinging to any one of these five activities or any combination of them, because they are activities. We call them aggregates. It sounds like a pile of gravel, but it's not. They're just different conglomerations of activities. When the mind has been in concentration, and begin to see. You can begin to see. Oh, this is where there's stress, say around aging or illness or death or birth or whatever the things are that may cause stress. So you're clinging to these different activities. And the more clearly you can see that, then the easier it is to let go. It's when you find yourself running up against problems in the meditation, a sense of discomfort in the body, or some sloppiness in maintaining your focus. Ask yourself, okay, which of these activities have you not been able to isolate out? Which ones are you confusing or glomming together in an unskillful way? The more easily you can isolate them out, then the more efficient your concentration is going to be, the more solid it's going to be, and the better it's going to be as a foundation for gaining even deeper insights. <laughs>